Hello everyone, I'm Tom Whitnick, and this is Rich Crest Talk. Thanks for joining us tonight. Tonight we have some very special guests. We have our Admiral Moran, Commander of the NOC WD, and Scott O'Neill, Executive Director of this NOC WD. Thank you both for joining us, really appreciate it. I know you've got a busy day every day, and taking the time out to join us is really appreciated. Our pleasure. Anyway, Admiral, uh, I'd like to start with you if I could. Sure. Uh, if you would just kind of tell us a little bit about how you wound up in the Navy as a young man, and how you wound up at Channel Lake. Wow. Um, you know, the, the Navy, I went to the Naval Academy um, a few years back. Uh, so that got me into the Navy, obviously. And, uh, you know, uh, you do a five-year commitment for doing, doing uh, get for your college degree. Um, and I really, really enjoyed the camaraderie the Navy provided. Uh, I went into the aviation uh, side of, uh, of the Navy and, and really enjoyed like I said, uh, the business of flying, the job that we did, the camaraderie that it bought, and so uh, now here I find myself 31 years later just still enjoying every day because of the people I work with. 31 years? 31 years. All right. How did you get wind up at Channel Lake? Well, because they told me to come here. Uh, to be well, quite, <laughs> to, I know that. <laughs> to be quite frank. Well, you know, uh, there's, there's a handful of jobs when you get promoted in the Navy. Um, as you get more senior, directs you where to go. Um, and I'll be uh, be honest. I've shared uh, with a, a few folks. Uh, there's probably seven or eight jobs uh, uh, an admiral will get as his first job in in the business of acquisition. Um, this being one of them, obviously. Uh, but this was the one job everyone told me back east I would never get because they didn't have the qualifications for it. So uh, when I was told I was coming here, quite surprised. I'd never been here before. Um, uh, but I will honestly tell you, it's probably the best tour I've ever had. Um, yeah. Uh, not only is the job fantastic, the people I work with great, um, uh, the mission that we do is incredibly important, but the community within which we share uh, here in Ridgecrest is uh, unlike ever I've ever witnessed, so I've uh, truly enjoyed it from all angles. Okay, so you have wings on your chest. I do. What do you fly? Well, I flew P3s uh, for, for uh, about uh, 18 years, and then I wow. transitioned into the acquisition side and uh, have done procurement uh, the remaining part of my career. Okay, very good. Thank you for that. Thank you. Scott, how about you? You're not military, okay? So you didn't wind up in the Navy by signing up on a dotted line, did you? No. <laughs> okay, how did you wind up uh, our executive director out here? Okay, well, I grew up during the space race. And I wanted to work in rockets. Okay. And so when I went to college, I really wanted to be an aerospace engineer, but uh, where I ended up going to school didn't have that degree, so I became a mechanical engineer. And uh, I had only a couple job offers because this was during one of the defense drawdowns. Okay, yeah. In 72. And so I, had a, I did get an offer from China Lake. And so I was no choice here. I, I just thought this is the place I had to go. Mm -hmm. So I came here in July of 72. 72, June, okay. June I was 72. just going to ask that. And uh, I went to work in solid rockets. I spent 15 years working in solid rocketry and thrust vectoring systems. Mm -hmm. And then I moved into more management jobs. Started off with technical management, uh, managing some uh, technical programs, and then I moved into general management. And uh, slowly worked my way up through those ranks to finally be offered this job. It's been the best job of my career. Mm -hmm. How long have you been the ED now? I took over as an acting in June of 2005. Wow, that's a long time. I got the job permanently in 2006, so I'm coming up on a decade. Okay, because I know I worked out there and retired off the base, and the EDs usually didn't last that long. Yeah. They went and toured over and went somewhere else right away quite often. Yeah, so. well, it's risky because uh, you're there around that long, you can see what you've done right and what you've done wrong. <laughs> <laughs> was, yeah. was that, were you, uh, yeah. were you the ED when Nav Air basically took us in, yeah. under their wing? No, Sterling Holland was... Uh, was the first okay. duty under the nav, under nav air, and then uh, Karen Higgins, and okay. then myself. I remember Karen. Yeah, she was a good, good one too. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, one of the things that's really important to the people of the community is to know where's Knock WD going in the future. Yeah. And uh, so one of the things that always their interest to the community is hiring. Okay. Like uh, uh, we've heard some presentations from Scott at a couple of things in town about hiring engineers, trying to replace and everything. Just wondering, how's the baby boomer attrition affecting recruitment? Which one of you would like to talk? Yeah, I'll start and let Scott yeah. fill in. Okay. Um, you know, hiring's going very well at the moment. Um, we really put a lot of emphasis the last several years um, uh, 
because we've got to bring new blood to replace those that are, are retiring. So the baby boomers, I would say, are retiring as, as you would expect. Uh, the challenge we all are dealing with is, you know, we didn't hire the next generation. So in the 1990s, we didn't hire anyone. Right. So we've got this, what we call, uh, affectionately, the bimodal workforce. And so as our, you know, mature uh, uh, workforce begins to retire, we don't have that next generation to turn to and, and transition that knowledge base. So uh, the only way you can really start affecting that is hire some mid-level uh, journeymen who have some experience and fill that in and accelerate the young folks we have into those more senior roles a little earlier than normal and then bring in a, a much younger uh, generation, which we are clearly, clearly focused on. And uh, I'll let Scott talk into the numbers, but the last few years, two years, have been very, very successful for us. Very good. That's good. Yeah. Yes. Well, I think when I started as executive director back in the uh, um, you know, 2005 time frame, I think we're around probably 4,100 people, something like that. We're over 5,100 now, almost 5,200. This is between China Lake and Point Magoo. Right. About a third of our workforce at Point Magoo and about two-thirds at China Lake. But, so we, we've, you know, over the last decade, we've grown. But I think more importantly, um, over the last couple of years, in the last five years, I think we've hired 1,500 new uh, professionals out of college. Over the last three five, years, five, you said? Five years. Five years, okay. Yeah. And so, and our attrition, you know, is is pretty steady. It runs about 6.5% every year, and it's been, uh, so, you know, our older our older workforce um, is, isn't retiring any sooner or later than they always have in history. But it's, you know, but we are at risk. Admiral's right on, and, in, in, uh, you know, because we didn't hire in the 90s. There, so there's no workforce that's immediately behind our more mature workforce. So we're having to, you know, put more emphasis and in, and in, uh, in, into the, you know, people are just starting their career. Right. And so this, that creates opportunity, pre presents some risk. But uh, I tell you, I'm I'm really impressed with our new young professionals. Uh, I think our university system in this country is, is uh, putting out a very good product. All these kids are coming in, uh, young professionals are coming in, pretty well trained. Right. And pretty motivated. I think there's another thing that I notice about the millennial generation is that uh, they do have a real strong sense of service. Okay. So if we, can, if we can touch that fabric in their humana, you know, they, uh, and get them around the military, get them to really see what they can contribute to our national security to our defense of the country. Okay, uh, we're about ready to go to break here. Uh, but yeah, the millennial thing, that's something I would like to talk <laughs> about a little bit more after we come back from the break. Uh, because that is a new type of workforce you have yes. to deal with. Right. So stay with us, folks. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back, everybody. I'm here today with Admiral Moran and Scott O'Neill, the commander of NARCWD and the executive director of, EW, of WD. Anyway, uh, before the break, we just started talking about the millennials and hiring the younger work engineers. Uh, would like to, one of you like to more expand on that more, how you're transitioning? Yeah, so uh, you know, I'll talk about the transition a little bit, and then we'll get into the specifics of the millennial group, because as Scott said, they are really uh, a very knowledgeable group of folks um, that are really inclined uh, to, to serve, not only um, the Navy and the government, but, but our community and our town, so it's pretty exciting for them. But the transition uh, we talk about, so when leadership comes out to knock WD visits Scott and I, they ask us what your number one priority is, we talk, you know, we say oh, transition of the workforce is number one. Part, partly due to the bimodal uh, workforce we talked about, we got to train that next generation of, of uh, scientists and engineer. But it's, but it's the backs of guys like Scott we've lived on for so long that have had this experience that were engaged in actually the development of products, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Um, We've kind of walked away and became more of an oversight entity, I would say, is the majority of our work, I'd say, the last 10 years as industry has taken on a much bigger role in the development of, of products. Uh, that pendulum swinging back, and, and, and we must do that because we've got to get our young workforce engaged in developing and, and, and building products so they know uh, what, what they're doing technically, not just from an education, but actually doing the work so they can provide the proper, I don't want to call it oversight, but engagement with industry. Um, going forward. We have to do that uh, to make ourselves credible. Uh, and the other piece of that, some of these things that we can do in-house, we can more quickly turn to the fleet and meet their immediate needs. So it's really important 
that we look at this new, new workforce, we get them the training they need, get them real hands-on experience so they can mature into that next uh, leadership position critical for, right. for WD. Yeah. No, the Admiral's, um, you know, he's been a lot of fun to work with because as, as he's got on board and, and learned about NOC WD, he, you know, I think he quickly saw how much at risk we are with our, you know, with our workforce and, and the rebuilding of our workforce. And so uh, the clear thinker that he is, you know, he, he wanted us to focus on three things. Focus on our people. Focus on the work that they need to do to get the skills and to be able to contribute to our national security. And then our infrastructure. Because he, he recognized that if our infrastructure isn't world class, then, you know, it's going to be harder to retain these new workers. And so, so we went to work on, on those three things. And, uh, I think that um, because we've focused and we've really kind of simplified that message you know, quite a bit that we have been able to generate awareness by, by DOD and Navy leadership mm -hmm. about this, uh, the risk we're at. And it's not just the risk at NOC WD. Right. This is a risk in our national security I you know, at large. We, the even industry is, is really um, leaning on the baby boomers and, and, and the Vietnam era. You know, and so uh, so they're in the process of rebuilding too. So this is across the government; it's across the defense sector, and I and I think we've we've been real, you know, instrumental in changing the conversation, or starting the conversation really about uh, the risk that uh, that we are in, and that we need to be proactive right now, start right. now to uh, to rebuild. Yeah, because it's interesting to say that about the emphasis of trying to do more in house, because. Right. Being retired out there, and Scott knows, we go through these cycles, yep. right. in-house, contract out, and I was right. involved in a lot of that contracting effort to exactly. use mm -hmm. the contractors to help us when we were so short on civil service personnel. And it was, we were in a position where we had no choice. Right. If we wanted expertise, we had to go to the contractor to get it. Right. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's good to see here the emphasis that we might try and you know, focus that more inside again. Yeah, it's, it's a fine balance. You yes. know, and our industry right. partners are, are incredibly important. We can't do this job without them. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but, but if we don't train our workforce, we don't help them either. Mm -hmm. Not only can't we help ourselves, but we don't help them. And so uh, I, I think, as Scott said, both industry and ourselves have to go through this process. And so there are some areas, and, 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 and uh, we can talk about it later, but uh, we've seen an increased amount of work come inside our fence line here in the last couple of years, and it's exactly the right thing we need to do and give these young kids the excitement of really doing that hands-on stuff. Mm -hmm. Instead of reviewing paperwork, they're actually building product, which they really do love to do. Yeah. And go and play that on our ranges, which very few exactly. get to do. Because yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that house, when there was a problem, somebody would say, hey, go fix it. And we did. Right. Didn't yeah. matter who it was or right. what you used, you went and got the people and you fixed it. Yeah. And, that, and usually pretty quickly, too. Right. Right. So that was a good thing. Uh, thank you for that insight, because that is a, a, one of those cycles that we go through. And you're right about having to have the partners of the industry. Right. We yep. can't do it without. Correct. It's impossible. Yep. Um, speaking of uh, industry and work, uh, how are, how's the base looking as far as work coming in? And are we, is our work, meaning is our workforce busy, or are they too busy, <laughs> or... Uh, what's the load yes, like? Yes. <laughs> yes and yes. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, you just look at, at the numbers. Um, you know, we, we've done a, a good deal of business last year, and we've increased that level this year. We're going to be upwards of uh, a little over $1.4 billion of work uh, this year, this past year. We're looking to push that. We were about, what, 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2 a couple years ago. So a slow, methodical pace, but it's a nice pace for us as we bring on the new workforce. Uh, so we don't want to take on too much because we want to make sure we can achieve uh, with the excellence WD is known for mm -hmm. um, and not overstep our bounds. So uh, we've got a really good clip going. Uh, and I will tell you the other thing that, that's really starting to pick up pace is our engagement with industry who wants to leverage our resources, right. either our ranges or laboratories, which are, are unique, you know, one of a kind in the world. And so when they can use them to advance their products, uh, we benefit from that as well. So I would say we're in a, a nice, a nice steady pace of increasing the amount of work we can take on at WD. Yeah, I, th I think that's right on. I mean, so, you know, we're very busy. You know, we've got, um, we carried over, you know, a fair amount of money so that'll help us start this fiscal year. So, uh, you know, our, we see a, a number of areas where we're expecting increased work and F-18, you know, doing the software products for F-18 is going to grow because that, that jet's going to be in, in the fleet longer than was planned. Yeah. And uh, so we are actively working with Boeing to support that jet. Um, we're, our role in the F-35 mm -hmm. is, is increasing slowly. And, of course, we've got some goals there that we're still working on. But uh, I think we made some pretty good progress towards achieving those goals this past year. 
our weapons work is, uh, you know, is very strong. And, uh, and I think the other area that we've, uh, we've grown is doing a lot of work uh, and quick reaction type work for the fleet. I remember a story just recently that came out through the Public Affairs Office. I can't remember what it was, but it was a very quick turnaround yeah. in getting something right out to the fleet. Yeah. So we've really, I think, improved yeah. our communication with the fleet and, our, and working with the fleet you know, more closely so we do understand their problems. And, uh, and we can bring our, our knowledgeable workforce and our, some of our corporate assets that we've got um, to bear for them. Okay. Yeah, and I think that's an important message because I think, you know, speaking from uh, as a fleet guy, and I, and I told our team this the other day, you know, for my first, you know, 15, you know, 18 years when I was, you know, operational, I didn't know what a warfare center was. Mm -hmm. I didn't know we had such a strong technical civilian uh, workforce behind all of the products to deliver. I didn't know. Okay, um, we have to go to a break here coming right. up. Then we'll come back and we'll finish this up. Super. Stay with us, folks. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. I'm with Admiral Moran and Scott O'Neill from NARCWD. And we're in our last segment, so we're going to move along here and wrap this thing up. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask, though, is that uh, I know when I was out there, there was a lot of joint effort in our projects. Are we still working strongly in that area of joint programs with uh, the other services? I'll go for it, Admiral. You got sure. this in that thing. Uh... Yeah, we, we are. I mean, um, uh, you know, the Navy for, for several years now has been made an investment in increasing our capabilities through partnership with our, 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 our key allies. So we see that, that growing. We are sharing uh, some of our, our um, technology with our allies as we try to, you know, engage them and share the workload around the world on, on what we do as a Navy. Um, so, yeah, I, I think uh, from a financial perspective, I think uh, you look at the, this last year and what's coming in the future, we'll probably double our workload with our international partners okay. on some of the work we're providing. And uh, once again, uh, you look at the uniqueness of our ranges and our laboratories is a big reason why we can do that. Right, and I remember when I was in the ranges that we had a lot of multi-service uh, right. customers out there. Absolutely. And it helped us survive and without them. Uh, the uh, projects that you have now, uh, are you, uh, are they new projects or just continuing projects or w where are we going with uh, these types of projects? It's still a mix. I think that, um, you know, our, our business base, you know, the, the major section of it is still working on programs of record that have been around for a while. But F-35 is coming. That's brand new. Um, there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot more emphasis today on uh, uh, surface warfare. And so we're looking at, the Navy's looking at building a new uh, anti-ship weapon. And so, you know, we're getting involved in that. And so there, there are some, you know, brand new programs come along. But I think where the real newness is, is, is the connection that we do have the fleet. Okay. And doing the quick reaction yeah. for the fleet. Yeah. How about UAVs? How are they in uh, that's, anything? That's, that's where we're doing a lot of support for the fleet. Okay. And so they're learning how to use those systems, and we're trying to outfit them to, to take to war. Admiral, you were going to yeah. talk about No, 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 that. no. It's, it's good. I just say, when you look at the, the, the budget, you know, we talk about it all the time. The DOD budget is getting smaller. Mm -hmm. um, but when you really look at what's making it smaller is the procurement. So we're not buying uh, as many ships and airplanes as we once did. And, and quite frankly, for naval aviation, we're really in good shape. We did a great job the last 10, uh, 10 or so years recapitalizing our aircraft. Um, the money today is being spent on new sensors and new weapons to make them more capable. And quite frankly, that is what we do here at WD. Right. We integrate sensors, we integrate weapons. So you're not going to see the big investment again on, on, on big aircraft buys. What you're going to see the investment in is new sensor capabilities and weapons for engagement. And, and that's what we do at right. WD. And mm -hmm. that's why uh, we're pretty confident, and, and we have seen the growth in our workload here because of that fact. So, yeah, DOD budgets are coming down, but the workload here at WD, I would say, is going up. Yep. Okay. I know as the result of the last BRAC, we did a lot of building out there. Are we utilizing all that space and projects are all in those areas and everything? Because yes. I was leaving about that time that all that was yeah. going on, and I saw everything going on, and I said, oh, I'm leaving now. Yeah. But I was just wondering, how is that all that new stuff that you build out there is, is it being fully utilized. Yeah, yeah we've, uh, we've, <laughs> it seems like we've filled, up, filled them up. Um, <laughs> but, we, you know, we do, uh, it gave us an opportunity to, um, you know, move our workforce around a little bit also. But as, we've, as we have grown 
you know, we've had space and laboratories to, to do that to do that work. Um, but it's also given us a little bit of room so that we can start um, modernizing some of our older laboratories too. So it's you know, so we've got a little bit of capacity now to be able to modernize, and so we're really starting on uh, on doing that. Like, like Mike Lab. Yeah, Mike Lab mm -hmm. in particular, right? Must and, be done. Uh, I mean, it's still it's World War II vintage, and uh, and it needs some investment. Okay. So it's still a workhorse for us, though. Uh, how much? Uh, let's go back to the hiring a little bit. So, are we still? Are you still trying to find new engineers and professionals coming to the uh, base? Yes, always. How many? Um, well, last year we we grew 400, 420 roughly people. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when we hired, what, 750 people? A little over 700, 750, I think, yeah. yeah right, a little over 750 people. Right. Probably the most we've hired in 20 in, years. Wow, that's that, right. that is a big effort. Right. And, it, and it's, you know, mostly our scientists and engineers, but we recognize that our administrative workforce is, uh, has the same demographics. You know, so we've really got to, um, you know, pay more attention to that and to, uh, and to really start rebuilding our administrative workforce too. Mm -hmm. So that's, that was a new emphasis that we took on this past year. All right. Okay, anyway, now I'd like to just move on a little bit back to a personal sure, side here. Sure. We, I mentioned earlier that we're having a change of command coming up soon. What's Correct. that mean to you, sir? Uh, it's, it's, it's bittersweet. Um, means I'm, uh, my time here is wrapping up in a couple of weeks and I'll be departing uh, uh, WD um, and moving on back east to a, a more of a program job again. Uh, program executive office uh, for tactical aviation will be my new job. Um, so I will be coming back here as a consumer All right. of the range and the laboratories and, and knock WD rather than uh, the guy responsible for With it. the so checkbook, of course. I will have a checkbook, there's no question about it. And, and, and you know, that's what's great about Ben. I've learned a ton uh, from the people. I've learned far more from this organization than they've learned from me. And it will benefit my role uh, down the road to uh, really lead, I think, programs the Navy needs to employ across the service. Okay. Uh, Any quick comment about the Admiral coming in behind you? A great guy, uh, Admiral uh, Corey. Uh, he's a great guy. I've known him for a couple years now. Um, he's been here at China Lake two other times, so he's got experience uh, flying and working in, in our laboratories. So he's excited to be here, I can tell you. Um, he's checked in this week, so we're wow. starting to do a couple week turnover, which is nice. We don't always get that opportunity afforded us to do a turnover with each other. Um, so we're going to take advantage of that, and uh, he's getting a fire hose treatment right now. But uh, okay. he's a fantastic leader, uh, motivated, uh, with a right sense of, uh, of of skills to go bring this uh, the warfare center we need to go in the future. All right, and where's he coming from? He's coming from Pax River. Oh, from Pax. Okay. All right, very good, Scott. And the word is you're going to be retiring. What's that mean to us? Well, I don't know what it means to. I don't think it means a lot. I, I am, you know, I'm like the Admiral, it's bittersweet. I, I've had um, my career at NOCWD and working for the Navy in general has been outstanding. I mean, you couldn't ask for more. Um, not only from a contribution perspective, being able to contribute, but for the leadership and for the confidence the Navy put in me and to be able to, you know, um, work around an institution like that is just, uh, it's been just simply outstanding. Um, for me personally, though, I'm not going too far. I'm going to retire in January, but I'm going to come back as a rehired annuitant. And if everything tracks the way it's tracking right now, I'll be working for Mr. Stackley, who is Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Research Development Acquisition on his staff. All right. And we'll follow through on a few initiatives that we've uh, uh, kicked off over the last couple of years and see if we can't uh, bring them to a little bit of point of maturity. Well, that's good news. I'm glad to hear great, that. That's great news. Well, that's good. <laughs> And uh, we're just about ready to wrap it up, I wanted to say. And I do remember working out there when you were there. And it, you were an honor to work under. Thank you. It was great to have you. Sir, Scott, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate you joining us and taking the time to do this today. Uh, our Absolutely. pleasure. Thanks so much for the time. That's it, folks. See you next time.